Hi all, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will discuss how to run your Spring Boot project and how to bundle it. There are two ways that you can bundle your project. The first is jar and second is war. We will talk about both in this video and I'll explain you step by step on how you can generate jar or war out of your Spring Boot app. So let's begin with jar. Jar stands for Java Archive. It is a GIF file containing the compressed version of dot class files and the resources of a compiled Java libraries and your applications. Okay, so this is basically the bundling of your Spring Boot application, which by default Spring Boot provides. So let's begin with jar. So the first thing that we will do here is we will pull out a basic Spring Boot application. I have created a Spring Boot project using a Spring Initializer and imported to my clips. If you are new to Spring Boot, then you can watch my video to get detailed understanding on how to create a basic Spring Boot project and link is shown above. So there are few changes that we will do in this project and then we will see how we can run this project as a jar module. So the first thing that we will do is we will create a method public string and print startup method. From this, I will return some generic message like uh, app is started. On top of this method, I will provide some request mapping. And for this, I will provide the URL pattern as slash, which means once the application is started, then for any kind of URL, for this application and the port number, this method will be automatically called. Now, in order to enable this, I will import REST controller annotation as well. Now, with these two changes, we are good. And now the next thing is we have to run this project. So, in order to run this, go to your Spring Boot application class, run as Java application. As soon as you do that, you will get some messages in your console and your application will be started. So once everything is completed, then your app will be started. This message is coming from this main method. And if you little bit go up, you will see Tomcat started on port number 8080. So now with this port number, if I go to the browser and type localhost and 8080, I will get this message application is started, which is coming from this message. Now suppose I want to create a jar version of my project. So in order to do this, we will go to our project, right click, run as and Maven build. In the goal type clean install and hyphen X to run this in debug mode. Select escape test and update snapshot and click on run. As soon as you do that, Maven will install all the libraries and you will get the prompt in this console. Now, once it is done, then go to your project back and right click and click on refresh. Then inside the target folder, you will get your project jar is created. So one important thing to notice here is we have not provided any kind of bundling here. Like if you go to your pom.xml file, then you will not get any kind of packaging details that we have provided. So if you don't specify anything, then by default Spring Boot create a jar project out of your code. Okay, so the same thing you can verify by going to your project workspace. So if I go back to my project, so this is the workspace which I have and inside the target folder, I have this jar created. So right now my application is running on port number 8080, right, which I have run this using a Spring Boot application inside the Eclipse. Now what I will do is I will stop this. And then if I go back to the server, then I'll get nothing because now application is not running. So now I have this jar file inside my target folder. So the main benefit or the core benefit of having jar module is if you open the command prompt here, then you can directly run your jar file using a simple command called Java hyphen jar. And then if you provide your jar name, so Java hyphen jar space, your jar name will automatically trigger or run your Spring Boot project. You don't have to do anything explicitly. See your application is now started and started on port number 8080. So the same thing that we did using Eclipse, the same thing you can just run your jar using a command prompt as well. That's the main benefit of having a jar. So if I go back to the browser, then I will get this message back. That means my application is up 
by running that command java-jar using the .jar file which was there in the target directory. Okay, so two important points. If there is no packaging details is provided in your project, by default Spring Boot will create a .jar extension of your project and put it into the target directory and you can run your jar file using a command prompt by a simple java command java-jar. Now we will talk about war. War stands for web application archive or web application resource. These archive files have .war extension rather than .jar and are used for packaging your web application. So Spring Boot is purely for backend but if you have your web module as well that means you are not just running your backend but as well as you have a, some frontend module as well then it is suggestive or then you should basically create a war module for your project and that's where dot war extension comes into picture so in order to create a dot war module of your project there are few configuration changes that we have to do the first changes is in pom.xml file now in pom.xml file we have to provide the packaging information which is war as I told before, for jar, you don't need to specify anything. But if you want to use war, then we have to tell Spring Boot explicitly that you want a war module out of your project. And the second thing that we are going to do is we are not going to utilize Tomcat in this case. OK, so if it is a what if it is a web module, then we don't want to run this into a default server provided by Spring Boot. Rather, I want to deploy my application explicitly on some web or application server. If it is a web application, then you should deploy it to some application server like JT or uh, WebSphere or any other uh, server that you have it handy. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to exclude the default provided Tomcat server, which is there inside this Spring Boot starter web. For that I have to provide this exclusion command. Now the second thing that we will do is we will provide Java servlet API dependencies. I will talk about this in a bit. Now let me move back to Spring Boot application. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to extend this Spring Boot application to use one specific class which is called Spring Boot servlet initializer. Okay, so this class is very important if you want to create a war module of your project so that you can deploy it to any of the application server, your Spring Boot application must extend this Spring Boot Service Initializer class. Now, if you go to this Spring Boot Servlet Initializer, then you will find this configure method and this method is something which we are now going to override. So, now we have overridden this configure method which is defined in Spring Boot Servlet initializer and from where we are going to trigger this Spring Boot application. So with this two changes now we are good to create a war module out of our project. Now again we will go to this Spring Boot project. Clean install keep text, update a snapshot and run. Once your project is built successfully, go back to your project, right click and then refresh. Once you do that, see your target folder is now replaced with .war extension. So this is something now which we have specified and we have explicitly generated from our Spring Boot project. So if I go back to this Spring Boot workspace under target, I have this war module. Now this war, module you can use and deploy wherever you want. So if you want to run this, you have to run on server that you have set up in your local. So if you have like Tomcat, Jetty or WebSphere or any other application server that you want to run this, then you can do that. So just to summarize what we learned today is there are two ways that you can bundle your project. One is jar, another is war. If you have a pure backend application, then you must use jar but if you have some front-end module as well then you can use a war module and you can deploy your application in terms of war extension and there are certain configuration changes that you have to do in your spring boot project if you want to run 
your project as a war modules. So that's all for today and then in the next video we will talk about hello world spring boot project example where i'll show you how you can create your first rest controller with a hello world messaging thank you for watching and please like and subscribe for more java tutorial videos